So now that we understand a bit about magnetics and have a, uh, a model to a circuit given by that uh, piping system between the two drums of water, we can also take magnetic fields and use two magnetic fields to generate electrical current. And this is an effect alternating current or AC power. And the device that uh, we're about to describe is actually called a magneto. It's a simple kind of generator. So what I have here on the diagrams are two horseshoe magnets. The one on the left here is fixed and the one on the right rotates. Now on the one on the left what I'm going to do is also take a copper wire from this voltmeter, one pole on this voltmeter, and wrap it around in a coil very tightly, not quite as uh, tightly, uh, tighter than what I show here, um, but that coil of wire wraps very tightly in the windings around the horseshoe magnet and connect to the other end of the voltmeter. This is going to allow us to measure the electrical current in terms of volts uh, that's produced by the motion of this rotating uh, horseshoe magnet on the right. So um, on the magnet on the right, imagine I have it mounted on some type of device and I can turn a crank. And when I turn the crank, uh, I can rotate it in a full circular motion. So using this simple device setup, what we're going to describe is how we can generate an electrical field from these two magnetic fields. Now when I start out, uh, the horseshoe magnet on the left is uh, flat against the plane and coming out of this plane would be the right magnet. They're at uh, a zero degree position on the right magnet. We'll start that at uh, zero degrees. And there would be no deflection because the two magnetic fields are not interfering with uh, one another. But if I rotate the right horseshoe magnet uh, 90 degrees, one quarter turn, now their north and south poles are facing one another. So there's a magnetic field between these two magnets. And that's picked up in the voltmeter here given by the uh, needle which will be pegged all the way over to the right position. That movement of the needle in the voltmeter uh, is due to this magnetic fields between both pairs of poles of these horseshoe magnets. Now if I rotate this another 90 degrees, we go to 180 degrees, and now the needle is back to zero. Uh, again, the two fields are not interfering with one another. The two magnetic fields are not interacting. And so uh, the needle goes back to the zero reading on the voltmeter. Now if I rotate it another 90 degrees, we're at the 270 degree uh, position and the like poles are facing one another, the two north poles and the two south poles. Uh, that's going to create a, a repelling force in the magnetic field which pushes the needle on the voltmeter all the way over to the left and pegs it towards the left. So this is one full rotation 360 degrees if we go back to uh, the starting position. So putting this all together, if we just focused on uh, the voltmeter and the needle, at zero degrees it read zero. At the 90 degree position, one quarter rotation, it was uh, pegged all the way to the right. Then at 180 degrees back to zero. And then another quarter turn, 270, uh, pegged all the way to the left. And then another quarter turn back to the zero. It's vertical again. So uh, the motion is uh, up and down, then swings right, then back to the left, then all the way over to the left, and then back uh, to neutral again, and then repeats, keeps repeating. So the needle on the voltmeter is oscillating back and forth, almost like a metronome uh, would be going back and forth uh, in timing with the constant rotation of the, the crank on the, the rotating magnet. Now if we could put a pen on the tip of that needle, and roll paper underneath it as we turn the crank, what we would see is a, a waveform pattern like this, a back and forth waveform pattern. This in effect is the voltage being produced by that magnetic field. We turn that 
pattern on its side, and we see a classic pattern from physics. This is your traditional sine wave. And so we uh, start out at zero degrees, at 90 degrees. Uh, the pen has peaked all the way to one side. Then we turn another 90 degrees, we're back to zero. Another 90 degrees, then we've pegged it all the way to the left. And then another 90 degrees back to zero, and we repeat again, up, down, and back to zero up to the peak, down through the valley to the bottom, and then back up to zero. And we keep this repeating. This oscillating waveform is a sine wave. Now, other properties of the waveform can be demonstrated just by doing some simple manipulation of the graphics. The height of the wave is called the amplitude. So the distance uh, from the peak to trough is the amplitude of the wave. And another property is called frequency. If I compress this, we have now uh, increased its frequency. We've roughly doubled it. Uh, the frequency means we see more uh, complete waves in the same amount of time. So the amplitude and the frequency of the waveform are two important properties of the waveform. And this, in effect, uh, is the uh, voltage pattern of alternating current, or AC power. Here we have just uh, one more diagram in these four positions. Uh, A, the two magnets uh, are uh, at right angles to one another. The magnetic fields are not interacting. Then at position B, we're at 90 degrees, and we've uh, got the two magnets attracting one another on both poles. Another quarter turn, it's back to zero. Then another quarter turn, and they're repelling one another uh, at both poles. And then another quarter turn, and we're back to zero again. So this is the origins of the classic sine wave pattern uh, coming from the field of electromagnetics. This pattern is also true in sound waves as well. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. And uh, when we look at uh, the properties of wire, we could move a wire through the magnetic field and keep the magnets stationary. So that magneto device that we showed with the uh, fix and rotating magnet can be repeated here using uh, fixed magnets and rotating the wire. So as we start out, uh, we have a similar device now. We're just going to rotate the wire between these two uh, attracting fields. Uh, when the wire is in this position, uh, we have a 60 volts potential difference between the two poles. If we rotate it another 90 degrees, the voltage drops to zero. Uh, another quarter turn, and it would be um, a minus 60 volts, and then another quarter turn, and we're back to zero. So this is how uh, a generator works. This is the basic principle of a generator. In fact, we could have uh, many fields uh, and uh, wire coils on a rotary like this. And by rotating this device through alternating north and south poles, we induce a magnetic field in the coils. And this, in effect, produces alternating current. It's a similar type of generator housing that the electric company uses to produce AC power that you get at the outlets in your home. And so, in fact, uh, when it comes to generating electricity, the only uh, real difference in, in the technologies used in different power plants is, in effect, what turns the crank. So if I go back to our previous magneto slides here, whatever source of power we're using to turn the crank is what's generating the rotations of this uh, of this magnet in this case, or in the case of a generator, it's turning the wire coils. Now, uh, for most power plants, what they use is steam. They'll attach a turbine to the device, and the turbine has fins on it, and they'll boil water. And the boiling water vapor rises past the fins on the turbine, and it rotates it. And it can rotate it at uh, uh, very high velocities. Also, it could be generated through uh, through hydro power, water power. It might be uh, a dam that has uh, 
a high force of water, water on the high end of the dam going through a narrow opening in the dam, can turn blades on a, a rotary device that can turn the wire coils. And uh, uh, it may be uh, other forms as well, uh, traditional, more traditional uh, water wheel type generator or uh, some type of uh, uh, treadmill kind of device or any other kind of setting could be used to uh, create the rotations that generate the circular motion. But essentially, um, power plants generate steam to do this rotation of the, the coils. And the only real difference in uh, generating plants is what they use to create the steam. They could use coil, uh, coal. A coal-fired plant would heat water to generate the vapor steam. Or they might use nuclear energy uh, by having uh, different jackets of, of water. Superheated uh, water coming out of the reactor can move over and transfer its its heat to uh, water that actually is then evaporated and produces the water vapor to turn the turbine. But this is how uh, power plants generate alternating current. 